Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take Photoshop Elements and we're going to create this water ripple reflection effect right here. As you can see I have this photo and it looks like it is being reflected in water. Now I was cruising around on the internet and I found a few different ways of doing this but I'm going to give you my twist on this. So let's go ahead and take and revert this image back to the original by going to Edit Revert right here. That's my original photo and I want to thank the Code Poet for letting me use this photo as I always do with the Creative Commons Flickr licensing. Now the first thing of course is to unlock the background layer. If you look in the layers palette you can see there's a lock right here. If I double click that lock and select OK I have just unlocked the layer. The next thing I need to do is I need to double the size of the canvas so I have some place to flip the image to. So let's go to Image, Resize, Resize Canvas. Now if you haven't already seen it, there are your short keyboard shortcuts right here if you want to go ahead and use your keyboard shortcuts. Now make sure the relative box is checked and in the height we are going to change that to 100 and then change the inches to percent. The last thing we need to do where it says anchor is we need to go to the top so that it will add the new canvas to the bottom of our frame. Select OK and there we have it. Now I need to add an empty layer to this. Normally we would go over here to the dog ear icon and click it, but I want to add a transparent layer underneath this. So if I hold the command or the control on a PC and click this, it will add my layer underneath. Now let's go ahead and fill that with black and I'll explain why I did that later. So if I go to edit, fill layer, and select black, there we go. There we have it. I just don't want this to be transparent mainly. So if I click on layer 0, now we're going to do our infamous command or control J because I want to duplicate this layer. And then what we need to do is we need to flip this image upside down and move it down so it looks like a reflection. So let's go ahead and do that by going to Image, Rotate, and then we're going to choose Flip Layer Vertically. We don't want to flip the whole project vertically, but we just want to flip this layer vertically, and there we have it. Now, do you remember how we move it? We go over to the Move tool, which is right there, and we just select that down, and it will snap it into place, and it's already starting to look pretty good, except that on a normal reflection, you can see very close to the person you can see the reflection very well and as it trails off the reflection gets lighter. So how would we go about doing that? Well that's the layer mask which is the second icon in your layers palette right here. Go ahead and click on that and then we need to add a little bit of a gradient. Now we're going to use our standard gradient which is white to black. If you don't have white and black inside here, just select D on your keyboard and it will change it to white and black. Our gradient tool is right here, second one above the little one that looks like a drop of something, which is the blur tool. Click on it, but make sure that you click the drop down arrow and you have white to black selected up there. And then we're going to draw from the top to the bottom right there. If you hold the shift key down it'll make sure that you have a straight line and then I'm going to let go and as you can see it's already starting to look really good it's looking like there is a picture and there's a reflection now the problem is this is, looks like a glass tabletop right here and so what we need to do is we need to add some lines to this in order to do this we're going to add a little bit of some filtering so let's go ahead and add a new layer right here click on it and it's going to create a new transparent layer above our photo. Then we're going to go and fill it with white this time. So there we go. Let's go ahead and fill this. This time we're going to fill it with white. Now don't worry if you're getting a little bit lost and I'm going a little bit too fast. You can rewatch this and I will also put the description and the instructions in the description. Now we need to go to filter and we are going to go to sketch and then we are going to add a halftone pattern to this. So there we go. We're going to add a line pattern right here. And I, what I want you to do is I want you to put about a 7 inch or 7 for the size and 50 for the contrast. 
and when you're done with that just select OK and what that's going to do is it's just going to make some black and white lines right there so there we have it the only problem is is that if we turn these into reflections that it would look a little bit too weird because it's not a nice feather on it so how would we get that to blur a little well we could go to our filter tool we could go to blur and we could add some Gaussian blur to this and as you can see I've selected about a radius of four pixels but you can slide this back and forth we want to make sure that these are nice and black don't start sliding them over too much to where they start turning too gray like this but make sure that they're still nice and black but you want them a little bit fuzzy now select OK and now we're done with this layer that we have above here now what we want to do is we're going to eventually add a displacement map to our photo. So we need to save this out as a separate file. So let's go to layer. Let's go ahead go to duplicate layer. Now right here where it says document we don't want to save it in the same document. We want to save this in a new document. And I'm going to give it the name displacement map. Displacement underscore map. I'm going to select OK. And then I'm just going to close this out because it's going to ask me if I want to save this. And I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to save this on my desktop as Displacement Map PSD. Now, of course, you've already seen that I have, I've done this before, so I already have one. So I'm going to click Save. You won't get a replace, but there we have it. Now that we've saved this out, this particular black and white fuzzy pattern that we have here we can go ahead onto our layers palette and delete this so hopefully I didn't confuse you we just created something new above that and we saved it out as a separate file now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a displacement map to this right here so make sure that you've got your clicked on right here on the very first one in our layer zero copy you want to go ahead and make sure that that is selected then we're going to go to filter we're going to go to distort and displace now I've got this set at horizontal scale 4 vertical scale 0 and then I'm going to leave these two as is and select OK now it's going to ask me what do I want to use for my displacement map well obviously the one that I just saved out which is displacement underscore map and I'm going to select open right there and as you can see, it kind of gives it that kind of nice looking water ripple effect that we have right here. Now it's still not done. It does have a nice look to it. But normally when you have water, there's a little bit of a blue tint to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to my black and white cookie tool. And I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to this. I'm going to select colorize and then I'm going to swing this all the way over so that there is a nice blue hue to it kinda of like water and when I have that and I've selected it I'm gonna go ahead and click this one right here which is the very first one this says this affects all layers below it or just the one layer below it so watch what happens when I click that as you can see it only affects the very layer that's underneath and not all of the layers now this is a little bit too blue for me so I'm gonna to go to my layers palette and I'm gonna take this hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to dial this down quite a bit until I get to something that's a little bit more palatable for me and that's about 20 percent so as you can see it's starting to have that nice blue effect right there and there we have it now we're done. So what I did is I unlocked my layer, I created additional canvas to it, I added a layer mask so that the upside down image would fade a little bit, and then I added a blue hue and saturation layer and then dialed down the opacity with it. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Tell your friends, send your link, send this link around to your friends so that they can try this as well. Cheers!